Camouflage barrier is a type of resistance where the customer is either lying to you about what the problem is, or even worse, and far more difficult to uncover, they're telling you the problem is something other than what it really is. Let's use a real life example, then we'll use a hotel example. A real life example. Uh, ladies, we have more women in the room than men today. Ladies, have you ever gone into the dress shop, that boutique, and the second you walked in across the showroom floor, you saw a dress that really got your attention. Whoa, mama, look at that dress. That's a beautiful. And so you walked over to it, and as soon as you saw it and flipped the price tag, and you saw it was $380, the salesperson walked up to you and said, oh my God, that dress is you. You absolutely must try it on. And you looked them right in the eye, and you said, oh no, I've got one just like it at home. I was just sort of curious. And what's the truth about the problem? You didn't want to spend $380 on that dress. What did you tell the salesperson the problem was? Oh, I already have. I got one just like it at home. That deal is over unless the salesperson can come back and figure out a way to remove the objection. Simple example? Now let's use a real life example. One of my good friends was a guy named Jim Van Dusen. Jim Van Dusen was the general manager of the Hyatt Regency Denver Tech Center. I promised we'd come back and talk about the high Regency DTC. Nice hotel. Nice hotel. Well, I was at my desk in San Francisco, and Jimmy called me one day, and he said, Hey, Steve, do you know Fred Favada with the American Society of Civil Engineers? I went, Sure, I know Fred Favada. I've booked his business a couple of times. Great guy. I've been to his house. And he said, I said, Why do you ask? And he said, Well, you know, he's got me right at the altar on the January midwinter, and, you know, January Aspen Vale, ooh la la, January down below in Denver, hey, 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 permafrost, it's rough going, it's rough going. Denver in, the, in January is, yeah, it's, you want all the business you can get. You're excited about a chance to book some business. And he said, he said, well, he's got me right at the altar on the January midwinter, and I just can't get him to commit. Would you do me a favor? Would you pick up the phone and call Fred? I went, sure. Now, we didn't know what a camouflage barrier was. We we're just a bunch of squirrels trying to get our quotas met. So I picked up the phone. I called Fred, and I said, hey, Fred, Steve Steiner, how's it going? Good. How's the wife? How's it going? Yeah, everything good. Yeah, listen. Hey, listen, Fred, I just got a phone call from Jimmy Van Dusen at our Hyatt Regency Denver Tech property, and he said that you're interested in the January Midwinter Conference, but you're having trouble making a decision. Is there anything I can do to help? He goes, no, no, not really. So I knew enough to say, Fred, let me ask this question. Are you looking at any other hotels? And Fred said, actually, we're looking at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs and the Brown Palace in Denver, Colorado. And I said, well, why don't you go to the Broadmoor? He said, if it were me, I'd go to the Broadmoor. The Broadmoor is one of the great hotels in the Western United States. It's got its own golf course. It's got its own zoo. It's got its own ski slope. The Golden Bee for a yard of beer is one of the greatest nights you can possibly spend. He goes, well, you know, the accessibility, I got a lot of guys coming in from the East Coast, flying into Colorado Springs. This was before Colorado Springs had redone its airport. Now it's one of the really beautiful airports, but at the time it was really just a Quonset hut, yeah. And he said, I don't think that's going to work out. I'll go to the Broadmoor, but not for this meeting. I said, well, why don't you go to the Brown Palace? He goes, I said, oh, I said, why do you want to go to the Brown Palace? Because at the time now, the Brown Palace has gone through a significant renovation. It is once again beautiful. The Brown Palace is named after Molly Brown, the unsinkable Molly Brown. It has historical significance. It's really a beautiful hotel. But at the time, the ownership had sort of let it run down a little bit. And I said, Fred, why would you want to go to the Brown Palace? He goes, well, my wife used to go there with her family when she was a child, and she's got this romantic notion. I said, have you seen the Brown Palace? And he goes, yeah. I said, are you really comfortable taking this meeting there? He goes, no. Mm -mm -mm, no, I, yeah, I can't, I can't. I said, okay, so the Hyatt's got it. And he goes, well, now, I'm going to lend you some words. And you can use these words, but at some point you're going to have to develop your own words. Because if you talk like this, it'll sound like me and not you, and it's got to sound like you. And let me tell you, when you are trying to deal with a camouflage barrier, this will only work if you know the customer well. Don't talk this way to a customer that you're just meeting. And I turned to Fred and I said, Fred, there's a problem, isn't there? And he goes, well, yes. I said, just tell me what the problem is. He goes, well, you'll laugh. I said, and here's the words. It's so graphic. It's so clear what my intent is. I said, Fred, won't you please share with me what the problem is? I have no doubt will be able to break the log jam. Notice I went from the first person singular to the first person plural. I didn't say I, I said we. That is a very powerful tool right there. That's a pronoun, and a simple pronoun can change my whole direction. 
Won't you please share with me what the problem is? I have no doubt we'll be able to break the log jam. Break the log jam. That's so clear what my intent is. We're going to get through the problem, and we're going to end up where we need to end up. And he said, OK, Steve, here's the problem. You know, we're going to Denver because my president lives in Denver, and she's got this notion that she wants to take everyone on the Mary Jane train up to Winter Park and ski on our open afternoon. For those of you that have ever been to Denver, the Mary Jane train is a ski train. It goes from Denver up to Winter Park, and it goes back and forth, and you know, you drink hot toddies, and you put your skis on the outside like a gondola, and it really is a great time. And Fred says, we're doing that because that's what my president wants to do. And you see, Steve, I am very, very particular about the image I project in front of my constituents. And the last thing I want to do is go skiing because you see, Steve, I don't know how to ski. I cracked up. He said, you promised you wouldn't laugh. I said, oh, shut up. You lie all the time, too. So I picked up the phone and called Jimmy. I said, Jimmy, here's the problem. you got the guy skiing, and he doesn't know how to ski. Jimmy says, thanks, Steve. I'll take it from there. He picks up the phone, calls Fred Favada. Hey, Fred, I just got off the phone with Steve. Only three <laughs> people know about this, you, me, and Steve. He, I didn't know that the skiing was going to be a problem. Remember, the reason we're doing the ski train is that's, why you're, where your president wanted, that's what your president wanted to do with the open half day. That's no problem. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to split that afternoon, open afternoon, into two separate groups. We're going to have half the group go skiing. We'll have the other group go snowmobiling. I'll make sure you're in the snowmobiling group. Jim Van Dusen got a signed contract by that Friday. Until you discover what the point of resistance is, until you discover what the camouflage barrier is, you're a dead duck. 